Hi, and welcome to the OpenShift Container Platform Technical Overview. My name is Brandon Cox, and I'm a Solutions Architect in the North American Public Sector at Red Hat. The purpose of this overview is to provide a high-level introduction of the components that make up the OpenShift Container Platform. First, a bit of recap on what OpenShift is. Red Hat OpenShift is an open-source container application platform that delivers applications to end users faster and more securely using Linux containers and the Kubernetes orchestration framework. OpenShift supports a broad range of programming languages and services, ranging from web frameworks to a variety of databases. The OpenShift platform supports both cloud-native stateless applications as well as traditional stateful applications. The primary IT initiatives that OpenShift targets are the ability to achieve faster application delivery by leveraging agile and DevOps methodologies, a focus on modern application architectures such as microservices, and the ability to adopt a consistent application platform for on-prem and hybrid cloud deployments. Built on top of standard and proven technologies, OpenShift allows you to run and manage virtually any container on your choice of infrastructure. The stable and secure Red Hat Enterprise Linux provides the foundational container host. OpenShift then leverages integrated components from Kubernetes to automate deployments, scaling, and health management. OpenShift also adds developer and operations-centric tools to enable rapid application development, easy deployment and scaling, and long-term lifecycle maintenance for teams and applications. At 10,000 feet, this is what an OpenShift cluster looks like. This may appear complex, but OpenShift provides an experience that abstracts end users from the complexities of the underlying technology. The remainder of this overview will break down the foundational concepts of OpenShift and explain the role of each of these components. OpenShift is fully supported anywhere that Red Hat Enterprise Linux is. Hybrid deployments across multiple infrastructures can be achieved, but many customers are still adopting OpenShift inside their existing traditional virtualized environments. An OpenShift cluster is made up of a number of different hosts, but there are two main types of systems in OpenShift. The first are called application nodes. Application nodes are where the containers that make up our applications will run. These hosts are simply Red Hat Enterprise Linux systems that have some of the OpenShift components installed to be able to run our containers. Cluster resources can also be expanded at any time by adding additional nodes to the cluster. All of our application components in OpenShift will run inside of Linux containers on the application nodes. But what are Linux containers? A container is the smallest compute unit in OpenShift. Containers are simply isolated processes running on a shared Linux kernel. The container itself is a running instance that was created from a container image. The container image is a binary that is packaged with all of our software components and some basic instructions on how the container should run. In OpenShift, a container is wrapped in a construct called a pod. A pod is a group of one or more containers with shared storage and networking, and a specification for how to run the containers inside the pod. A pod's contents are always co-located and co-scheduled and run in a shared context. A pod models an application-specific logical host. So in a pre-containerized world, these would have been services running on the same physical or virtual machine. In OpenShift, the smallest unit that can be orchestrated is the pod. OpenShift determines where and how to run the pods across a pool of resources. OpenShift also determines how to manage the complexity of networking pods together and then manage the lifecycle of pods. Application nodes are the system where our applications run. All of the cluster operations are handled by the other main system, called a master. The master is the orchestration and scheduling engine for OpenShift and is responsible for knowing and maintaining the state of the OpenShift environment. The master has four primary functions. Imagine if we had to identify and access the node running our pods every time we wanted to make a change to our application. We do not need node-level access to manage our apps. Instead, all requests pass through an API exposed by the master. All requests must go through the master and must be authenticated and authorized, with customers often choosing to integrate their own identity management systems into the OpenShift environment. The desired and current state of the OpenShift cluster is maintained in a component called etcd. etcd is the distributed key value data store for state and other information within the OpenShift environment. Cluster metadata is held in etcd, which includes all objects, such as builds, deployments, services, and routes. 
The scheduler portion of the master is the specific component that is responsible for determining pod placement. The OpenShift scheduler uses a combination of metadata and environment state to determine the best fit for running pods across the nodes in the environment. There are often requirements that certain containers should be designated to run on certain nodes, or a container should be separated from other workloads running in the cluster. Node labels are metadata that can be used to tag infrastructure in such a way that allow a platform administrator to design the cluster according to a real-world topology. Platform administrators configure the scheduler to use these labels when determining where specific workloads should run. The master is responsible for monitoring the number of pods and automatically scaling them as desired. Pods can be manually scaled stating the number of pods that should be running. Pods can also be auto-scaled based on metrics collected from the pods within the boundary of minimum and maximum number of pods that is configured for the auto-scaler. The OpenShift master is capable of monitoring application health via user-defined pod probes. Liveliness and readiness probes determine if a pod is healthy and able to accept traffic. So what happens when the master sees that a pod is failing one of its probes? Perhaps one of the containers inside the pod exited because of a crash or another issue? The OpenShift master is capable of remediating pod failures automatically. It manages the traffic to healthy pods to ensure application availability, and it handles the restarting of pods all automatically without any user intervention. It's also possible that an entire application node fails, and OpenShift can detect these types of failures as well. If the application node fails, the master will restart the pods that were running on the failed node on another healthy node that has enough capacity. When the pods pass their health checks, traffic will then be routed to the new pods automatically. In order to be shared and deployed, container images need to be stored in an accessible container registry. Popular registries like Docker Hub are available as a place to store and collaborate images that teams have created. Image registries store the different versions of images available, allowing us to deploy a snapshot of our application at any time. We can also tag images so we have a clear idea of the significance of the versions and what they mean. A common example is to tag an image once it's been tested and ready to be promoted out of a development environment. Public online image registries are not optimal for companies that have strict requirements about what gets deployed in the environment. The registry component provides a secure and trusted supply chain of images provided by Red Hat and images blessed by security teams that can be the baseline of what gets deployed on the platform. Role-based access ensures that only those who should have access to an image are also able to deploy it. To know how to route internal traffic to our pods would be extremely complicated. Pods can reside across multiple hosts, be scaled up and down, and even restarted on different infrastructure if something is to go wrong. The service layer abstracts the complexities involved in routing traffic to any of the running instances of our pod. A service is a grouping of pods that are running on the cluster and provide important features such as internal load balancing, service discovery between apps, and features to support zero downtime app deployments. Backing pods can be added to or removed from a service arbitrarily while the service remains consistently available, thus enabling anything that depends on a service to refer to it at a consistent address. Services are assigned an IP address and port pair that, when accessed, proxy to the appropriate backing pod. Services are leveraged for communication between components running on the platform. In this example, a pod running our front-end component needs to connect to a pod running the back-end component. The front-end pod does not care where the back-end pods are running or how many of them there are. The service will determine how to load balance the request across the healthy pods that can handle this request. Not every consumer of applications exists inside of OpenShift. External clients need to be able to access things running inside of OpenShift as well. The routing layer provides access for external clients to reach applications running on the platform. A router is a separate component that runs HAProxy to be able to assign a readable and accessible URL for external access. Just like a service, the router is capable of load balancing traffic across healthy pods, but the exposed route is externally accessible. Applications are only as useful as the data they can manipulate. Containers are natively ephemeral, meaning the data stored in a container is not retained when the container is restarted or recreated. OpenShift provides a persistent storage subsystem that will automatically connect real-world storage to the right pods. This gives you the ability to run containerized versions of databases and legacy apps that require storage on disk. When it comes to end users of the platform, typically there are two groups of users with different motivations. 
Developers are concerned with building and testing application functionality rapidly, while operators are typically more focused on platform stability, security, and policy enforcement. OpenShift provides tooling for both developers and operators to leverage the platform for their day-to-day -day tasks. The web console, IDE plugins, and command line tooling allow for users of the system to build and deploy applications with ease. Integrated Continuous Integration and Delivery Pipelines, or CICD, allow for the automated and standard builds and deployments across teams. Open APIs and pre-built integration allow operators to interface with the system using the tooling they're already comfortable with. This concludes the OpenShift Container Platform Technical Overview. Please stay tuned for further deep dives on topics such as networking, storage, and source to image. My name is Brandon Cox from Red Hat's North American Public Sector, and thanks for watching.